Well, hello there, ladies and gents. This is the kid, DC Wrestling, back at it again with another video. Um, if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. It would really be much appreciated. As you can see, I know you guys are not used to seeing this. I know the past few days I've actually been showing my face on YouTube, just trying to spice things up a little bit, trying to, you know, upgrade a little bit. I guess you could say become evolution or something like that. Also, in my first two reviews, I had the shades on. I don't have them on now. Now, I'm not fully getting rid of the shades. I might bring them back for one video of right now. This is pretty much what you're going to get. What you see is what you get, pretty much. But not going to waste any time, man. Let's get into today's video. Um, I will be making a SmackDown review, even though I am recording this on Thursday. This will be coming out Friday afternoon around 11, 12, something like that. So later on Friday, I will be doing a SmackDown review. Still debating on if I should go live or not, but either way, there will be a SmackDown review regardless. So hopefully if you can, you'll check that out just as well. You're checking out this video. But let's get to the main topic at hand here. So we saw this past week on AEW Dynamite, the in-ring debut of the Samoan machine, Samoa Joe. And, um, you know, Samoa Joe showing up on AEW and even Ring of Honor in that case, but really just being announced as the newest member of the All Elite Wrestling roster. You know, it really inspired me to make this video. And the title of the video is really a discussion in and of itself. Is AEW signing too many wrestlers? Because let's let's go back, ladies and gents. Let, let's take a little trip down memory lane. Let's go back to July. And I'm going to start at July. And the reason why, because, well, July was when, well, crowds were starting to come back to 110% full capacity. And as we saw literally their first show back with, with fans in July, AEW brought Malachi Black. And then, you know, later on, we saw pretty much the entire House of Black debut in AEW, Buddy Matthews, Brody King. We've seen CM Punk debut. We've seen Adam Cole debut, Brian Danielson, recently Tony Storm, Ruby Soho, Matt, well, not Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy. Like, you guys get what I'm saying? You know, Keith Lee, you, you guys get what I'm saying here? The point that I'm trying to make is, is like, don't you guys think that maybe, just maybe, as much as it's cool to see all these superstars well, all these wrestlers show up in, you know, the AEW getting that huge crowd reaction, getting them millions and millions of views on YouTube. And I know it may seem like a cool moment. You know, we sit there on the Internet and type in all their possible dream matches they can have. Oh, think of the dream matches Jeff Hardy can have with MJF and Darby Allen and Andrade El Igolo and so on and so forth. But... Don't you just sit there, even with these whole debuts, and even though when you get excited and happy and jumping for joy, don't you also kind of sit and think that maybe, just maybe, AEW with bringing in these debuts, bringing in these new signings, don't you think it's to the point where it's getting too much a little bit? I get it. I 110% I get it. You cannot pass up on great talent. I get it. I mean, that's why AEW didn't sign all of the good talent. If AEW was to sign everybody, they would have been going after EC3. They would have been going after Braun Strowman. They would have been going after Fandango. Heck, I promise you, they probably would have signed Ryback. I know a lot of you don't like Ryback, but if AEW was trying to sign everybody, they probably would have uh, signed Ryback too. But... They're only really going after and scouting and getting and and, pa and passing up. Well, not passing up, but getting in the um the new talent, the the the, the great talent, quote unquote. But the reason why I say this all because like AEW has a stacked roster, they really do, and AEW's roster is so big that it feels like that the people, even even the people who made their debuts. It feels like they're not getting that much attention. I mean, look at look at look at freaking uh, Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho, you know, was one of the main signings at AEW All Out. And where has Ruby Soho been? You know, Ruby Soho's old thing has been destination unknown, and yet it seems like her destination 
still hasn't felt unknown yet because she hasn't really done anything. Yes, she competed in the whole TBS tournament. You know, she challenged and fought Britt Breaker in the main event of AEW Grand Slam. But after all those things transpired, where has Ruby Soho been? She's been on Dark, Dark Elevation. I don't know. I don't I don't watch Dark or Dark Elevation. Hardly anyone does unless you're an AEW diehard. I mean, look at, look at Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal's just now. I mean, thank God for this whole Ring of Honor stuff. Jay Lethal's just starting to get a little bit more TV time because he came in, debuted at Full Gear, had the match against Sammy, lost, and then you, you don't see him anymore. He's, he just disappeared. He's he's on Rampage. He's on, again, Dark, and he's on Dark Elevation. Who's another big example? Um, Tony Nese. Oh, that's a big example. And you want to know why? Because you had guys like Excalibur saying, while Tony Nese was in the crowd and everything, oh, Tony Nese, he is the hottest free agent in professional wrestling right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Nese is sitting by ringside watching the, the, the TNT guys go at it, watching the main event, observing, analyzing it, because Tony Nese is the hottest free agent. If Tony Nese is the hottest free agent in professional wrestling right now, then why isn't he main eventing Dynamite? Why isn't he competing for the AEW World Title? If Tony Nese was, if you were presenting Tony Nese up as a big deal as this hottest free agent, then why is the quote unquote hottest free agent in pro wrestling wrestling on dark, wrestling on dark elevation, and wrestling on dark and elevation matches that are nothing short but squash matches? Like, I, I get it. Again, AEW. They're good. They're not perfect. I know everyone likes to think they're perfect, but they're not. But just, it just, come on. Like, are you sure? Like, I don't know, man. It just, it's, it's, it gets to a point where it's okay. You're signing all these talent, but now, you know, what's going to happen to the old talent? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you want to make, you're trying to make everyone feel important, but you're bringing in almost everybody else. And, you know, it's going to seem like the old guys don't really feel that much important. I mean, look at, Joey Janela and Marco Stunt, they're out the company. Well, they're almost at the company. Their contract's coming up. Now, I'm not trying to say Marco Stunt and Joey Janela are not a big deal because they're not, as many people think they are. But you gotta, you, you guys get what I'm saying here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, I, I just had to say that. I, I had to say my piece, you know, put it. If you want to put in the comment section that AEW is not signing too many wrestlers, then, then go ahead um, but but because this is really a discussion, you know, in the comments and you get you guys talking and, you know, interaction, all that good stuff. So is AEW signing? And I'm not. And if you guys have noticed, I'm not mentioning ex WWE guys, you know, because <laughs> everybody be like, oh, he's talking about the the ex WWE guys. No, I'm just like saying, like, is AEW signing way too many guys? Do a is AEW focusing their whole show on debuts like this is like an actual good discussion. I think we're going to have in the comment section. So, like I said, man, if you like this video, appreciate it. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a SmackDown review uh, later on Friday night. Uh, if you check it out, go ahead. Like I said, this is pretty much the new format. Um, think about this for a while, but uh, hopefully this can help, you know, you know, trying to grow the channel, grow the interaction more and all the good stuff. So, yeah. And um, I do apologize for the video being that long. I don't try to make these videos that long, but... You know, I kind of get rambling on. I kind of ramble on for quite a bit now. Anyways, y'all, this has been the Kid DC Wrestling. And so, um, yeah.